Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Stamp Cat Stamps. I'm back again with another mail day episode. As usual, the viewer mail has been rolling in. Today I will be going over mail that I've received from mid-March until now, end of May. So just two months this time. I'm not as behind as I usually am. I have a nice stack of mail, so let's have a look. First off, as always, I like to start with postcards. I have this beautiful postcard here from Sarawak. Look how cute this is. This is from Andrew. Greetings from Kuching. In Malay, this name translates to cat. They have a cute cat statue, several, in the city. I'm visiting a friend and it's my first time in Borneo. I had to go through immigration again when arriving to Sarawak. They have a special legal status. Take care, Andrew. And I love these cute cats all over the card. Also, the stamp is pretty cool. Looks to be showing some kind of plant life. I love me a good decorative selvage. I love when they put little relevant designs in the selvage of the stamp. I confess I didn't know where Sarawak was until I got this card. The country of Malaysia actually has a pretty interesting setup here. It's actually separated by water, and Sarawak is part of this island here, Borneo. Thank you, Andrew, for this cute postcard. Up next, I wanted to quickly share this card. This is actually from my parents who went on vacation to the Philippines back in February. The picture shows the chocolate hills in Bohol. But the thing I wanted to show you the most was this stamp of Jollibee. If you're from Philippines or familiar with Philippines, Jollibee is absolutely iconic there. Some people say he's kind of like the Ronald McDonald of the Philippines, but I just thought that that was so cool that he was on a stamp. Thanks, mom and dad. Up next, I have two postcards from Richard Philatelist. The first is one that he got from Japan, and it is so cute. There are all these little animals lining up to put their mail in the post box, and the postal worker is a little bit shocked by this. <laughs> Richard writes, hey Lisa, here's a greeting from Kyoto. I bought this lovely card from Kyoto Central Post Office. The post offices in Japan sell postal themed cards. I love them a lot. Just wanna share this enjoyment with you. Unfortunately, there is no cat on the card. Best regards, Richard. <laughs> and then this second card here has a beautiful fuchsia flower. Hi Lisa, here is one of the first stamps with King Charles III's silhouette. Let me share a PHQ card with you. It's a new era of British stamps, Richard. And it comes with this beautiful first day of issue postmark. And PHQ stands for Postal Headquarters. And they are postcards issued by the UK that feature a commemorative stamp. And since this image is the same as the stamp, I wondered, is this a maxi card? But when I searched it, I learned a maxi card, the stamp has to be on the same side as the image. So a little bit of terminology for you. Thank you so much, Richard. I always enjoy receiving your postcards. And then finally is this postcard from Ottawa. Maybe this is also cheating because I actually sent myself this postcard. <laughs> I just got back from Ottawa earlier this month. I went to Oropex, the national stamp show in Ottawa. And while we were there, I also did some extreme philately and enjoyed the tulip festival that's going on right now. But the reason I wanted to send myself this is because the post office across the street from Parliament Hill has the special picture pictorial cancel of the parliament building. And that same weekend, May 6th, was also the coronation for King Charles. Canada issued this brand new definitive stamp, which I was able to send to myself as a first day of issue. While we're on that subject, I actually got this cover sent to me from Sarah, who I've met before at Capex, and I also ran into her at Oropex. She actually went to the same post office on the same day. Sarah writes, Hi Lisa, it was so nice to see you at Oropex this past weekend. I recently found out my favorite post office has this pictorial cancel and I wanted to share it with you. I always love the spring stamps that Canada Post issues and attach the otter mom and baby stamp from the animal mothers and baby set. It reminded me of you and your little stamp kitten. Happy collecting, Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah, that is so thoughtful. This is another brand new issue from Canada Post that I didn't have yet and the artwork is pretty cool. It's almost like kind of a embroidery. Thanks so much, Sarah. Great minds think alike. Up next, I have an envelope from Eric in the Netherlands. These are the stamps that came with that. And Eric sent me some really cool items. Eric writes, Hi Lisa, as discussed, I really like your strange topic of left-facing cows. As part of a series of three, the Netherlands issued a stamp with three half fronts and three half backs of a cow. With a pair, the cows are complete. I thought that's adding to the strangeness of the theme. I knew I had 
have some extras as I too like the stamp. The theme of the stamp is Cattle Pedigree, where the other two stamps of the series show fighting cancer and a rescue squad. I hope you like these as much as I do. Have fun with the stamps and let me know when they've arrived. Kind regards, Eric. <laughs> and this is so cool. I'll just show it to you up close. Each stamp has three halves of the front and three halves of the back, but in order to have the full cow, you need to have the stamps in a pair. <laughs> That's so cute. And this Fighting Cancer stamp is also interesting in terms of the imagery that they use. So there's Cancer the Crab, the astrological symbol with a sword through it. So that's pretty neat. Thank you so much, Eric. These are really cool. Up next is a letter from Sarhan. Sarhan has sent many letters to the channel before. He is in Singapore. There are the beautiful Singapore stamps on the envelope. Sarhan sent me an envelope of stamps and he writes, Hi Lisa, I've added some of my stamp collection in the envelope. I'm hoping you'll like it very much. I have both used and unused stamps. Sarhan also asked me a few questions about how many stamps I have, how do I store them or arrange them in stamp albums, or do I keep them in a chocolate tin? <laughs> Which I guess is from my last video where I was keeping all my viewer mail in this box of chocolates I was eating. To answer your question, Sarhan, my collection is a complete mess. I think the problem is I keep changing my mind about how I'm gonna store the stamps when I'm halfway through it. I bought so many albums from stamp shows that I plan to organize my stamps, but then I find they're outgrowing the album before I even have time to put everything in there. <laughs> Here, I have a few items nearby that I can show you guys. I still have this good old box of stamps. If you've watched the channel for a long time, you might remember. I was making them these little plastic mounts that I planned to eventually display in another album. This is not really a stamp album, it's more of a scrapbook. There's my Pokemon obsession. And my goal was kind of to arrange the stamps in like visually unique ways, but obviously that takes a lot of time. I kind of gave up with doing that. I have another album that I picked up that my goal was to put all of my topicals in there. These are a lot of my cows facing left so far. I also have Hello Kitty, anime stamps, Winnie the Pooh, but as you can see, it's starting to overflow. And then one final thing I'll show you guys, something that I've been working on this year for some of the fan mail actually that I get from viewers because I get a lot of mail in different shapes or kind of awkward shapes. I have been working on making a binder where I put some of the envelopes that I received. So this one, that's from Richard Philatelis for the Swap and Research Challenge. If there's room, I'll put the letter and in some cases I'll do a little write-up talking about the items. This is a cover about the Vietnam War and this one here I did a little write-up about the special pictorial postmark and that's the letter letter that it came with there and in that one is Mayon Volcano and I have a little write-up about the legend of the volcano. Here's another first day cover that I got from Bangladesh. So yeah you get the idea. Kind of gives me just a place to put covers and kind of awkwardly size their shape mail. And then I also have several just regular uh, stamp albums that I've been putting the stamps in but again they're overflowing. But honestly I'm so lucky my collection is growing faster than the storage options that I have to keep up with it which is a really amazing problem to have. <laughs> Good question, Sarha. Thanks again for sending me some more Singapore stamps to add to my collection. Up next, I have two more letters from Singapore, actually. These are from Ao Young Seng Woon, and he always decorates the envelopes beautifully with stamps. Ao Young has also written to the channel before. In this one, he writes, Hi Lisa, hope you and your baby are doing well. Enclosed is a set of pet stamps from Singapore with two stamps depicting cats to add to your collection. I hope you like it. We'll try to use some stamp on stamps for the mail. Best wishes and regards, Ao Young Sang Moon. And this item is super cool. It's almost like a presentation uh, folder or pack issued by the post office. And there are the cats. This one in particular looks super lazy. There's a mouse and he does not care. And then the second letter I got just recently. Hi Lisa, I watched your video clip on Japanese art on stamps. Very nice presentation on traditional Japanese art. Japan stamps happen to be my current collecting interest. Japan as a country is trying to promote the hobby of stamp collecting. From 2010, each year issued over 400 different stamps. 
literally more than a stamp a day. From its first year of issuing stamps until now, Japan has issued over 11,700 stamps with very diverse themes and shapes, art, scenery, cartoons, food, Hello Kitty, comics, characters, you name it, they have it. Enclosed are some Japan stamps with art-related themes. <gasps> Hope they can add to your collection. Best wishes to you and your baby. Regards, Ao Yang Sang Woon. And these are so cool. beautiful. I love, love, love Japanese art on stamps. By the way, I'll just mention, if you also like Japanese art, there's still time to enter the giveaway that I'm hosting. You have until June 15th until entries for the giveaway close for your chance to win Japanese art postcards as well as a special stamp cat print <laughs> that I made. Be sure to check out that video on Japan stamps on my channel for more info on entering the giveaway if you want to. Thank you so much, Ao Young. I love these. They're so beautiful. I'm very excited to add them to my collection. Yes. And up next, I have another regular writer to the channel. Henrik from Maryland has sent three letters. Henrik always decorates his envelopes with beautiful stamps. I especially love this one, which is from a series that shows children's book animals. And I remember Wild Thing. That was one of my favorite books when I was a kid in elementary school. Uh, with his letters, Henrik has sent several stamps and items, which I will show you here. And he's also written me a few letters telling about his family and grandchildren. Henrik's advice is enjoy your kid while he's still young because they grow so fast. All my best wishes and happy collecting from Henrik. <laughs> are all doing well. I have one last big package from Kyrgyzstan. One of my previous episodes, I received a big package from Kyrgyzstan Express Post. They have once again sent me another generous package with some thoughtfully considered cat stamps on the envelope here. These are so cute, I love them. They sent me tons of stuff. I want to start off with showing you these cool postcards. Each postcard has a special postmark, the first day of issue. This rabbit one for the Lunar New Year is actually probably my favorite. I just love the art and the rabbit is so cute. And these are for chess, special chess postmark. These show some trophies for the chess competition. This one is for fisheries in Kyrgyzstan, and that's actually a bird's eye view of some of the fisheries. These are a set of four for a celebration of the arts. And then finally, some diplomatic relations with other countries showing their prominent leaders. And along with each of these postcards, they also sent me the first day covers and sheet of stamps for all of these issues. And as per usual, the official first day covers also have some information about the issue of the stamp on the back. they sent me. And this is super special because this stamp being 184 millimeters in width is the widest postage stamp in the world. Look at that guy. And we'll put a little asterisk next to that fact because when I went to check this online, there are a couple of points of contention. This Peace Mandala stamp issued by Mongolia in 2004. The stamp itself also proclaims to be the largest stamp in the world. And it was surprisingly difficult 
to find information on the exact dimensions of this stamp. So this one article by Canadian Stamp News says that it measures 185 millimeters in length, which would be just one millimeter more than the Kyrgyzstan stamp. But this other random website says that its length is 182 millimeters. So I'm not sure what the actual length of this stamp is. If you guys know, please comment below. I'm interested to find out. This Peace Mandela stamp is kind of more the size of a sheet. It's probably more about the size of this entire card. I think it's safe to say that this stamp from Kyrgyzstan is the longest stamp in the world that can be used on a regular envelope. So that is super cool. Thank you so much to Courage Express Post for again sending me this amazing package of your recent stamp issues. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to send me something in the mail, send me an email at thestampcat at gmail.com and I'll pass along my address. Hope everyone is gearing up for a fun summer. As always, stay safe and stay curious. Bye!